Oh, well, welcome to another 6 Gen Farmer. We're back with Rob today. There you go. It's always a good day when Rob comes. <laughs> so we're gonna go in this cornfield because this is where I did one of our CTIS trials. So for those of you guys, guys maybe new here, didn't see the videos, uh, Rob helped us install a CTIS system or central tire inflation system on our planter this year. So we're able to get my planter tires down at like 22 PSI yep, 22. versus 60. Yep, 60, Big. 65 PSI to go down the road where most people got to run. We're getting yours down to 20, 22 with the PTG CTIS system. Yep. We're making a bigger footprint. We're actually able to roll over the ground where you eliminated compaction, we made your planter float, so. And we came out here earlier in the season, I'll put that video up here in the corner and down in the description as well, but uh, we did some root digs and it was pretty impressive seeing the root digs and how much rounder those roots were and how much more they're spreading out versus where we had the tires inflated. So, we're going to attempt to find our passes today. <laughs> now it's later in the season. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard because with the the um, system on the planter and then our track sprayer, it's very hard to tell where we've been driving this year. So we're going to try and find those and we're going to do a quick little yield check. Um, neither of us remember how to do a yield check from college, <laughs> but we're hoping that we can see a big enough difference in the ears um, just looking at them. Past experience, it's been pretty simple to find. Just it's it's visual I and mean, yep. we'll be able to tell where that compaction was and where it wasn't just by looking at the year so but we did have a pretty dry year this year which he says he still thinks he can you'll be able to see a difference um i think this system probably really shines in wet years but yep. it'd be curious to see what it's like on a dry year because it's what september 7th or something like that yeah. and look at how brown or corn like we'll probably be combining in 10 days i'm guessing so it'll be a little bit wet but all right so we go try and find our row let's go for it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I completely forgot we applied in hydras here. There's, there's definite tracks of where we've been. Yep. And then we also high void it, so that would... Yeah, I completely forgot about that. So, theoretically, straight ahead should be our pass. Somewhere up here. Let's see if I can make a mess of these tire tracks. So it looks like there's one there, one here, one there. Yep, here's one for sure. So that would mean that... The center tire of the high boy would be going down the middle. So the outside tire tracks where we want to be. So this is where our planner was. Yes. Coming right down there. Theoretically. You're right, there is quite a bit of difference there. Yep. Rob would just point out to me that like when you walk on the so this is where the tires were inflated. So this is where we were not using the CTAS. And walking right here feels like you're walking on cement or pavement. Then you step over to the middle. You can see how dry we are. The ground's all cracked, but you can definitely tell a difference just in the in, the, in your feet. We didn't bring a tape measure, did we? Not. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we're gonna guesstimate it. Well, let's. Well, let's just pull some ears, see if you can see a difference. Okay, so we went and got three random ears in 17 point like five feet. I forget what it is exactly, but um, we did our best to get get the rough right amount but anyways we're going to use the pioneer yield calculator online that's a pretty simple one we're following the directions and now we're over in the ctis area and you can really tell like look at how how much i can already dig my foot in this dirt compared to the other side that's pretty substantial so we went in the field we pulled the three ears and 17 and a half feet and we did um, we just went end middle end we didn't really I mean, yep. I just picked a random one. Here is the CTIS ones, and here is the inflated non-CTIS ones. And there was one kind of dud in the CTIS ones, but you can tell these two are actually a fair amount bigger than all the ones that you picked for the, the non-CTIS, so. What I really noticed on the inflated ones on all three of them in every year we looked at out there, so they never really filled out. Yeah. Right, I mean, they. They got some good growth. I mean, they're good size ears, but they never filled out the tops. These, like, these ones fill out just, really well. Just the pure size here. Yeah. And it's pretty consistent, minus that one dud there. So. Yeah, and out of the two trials we did, I think this is a, the one that is not as good as the other one because we came in and we, impl we applied a um, higher ammonia with our wheel tractor, which does not have CTS yeah. on it afterwards, and you can still see this difference. That's kind of amazing. So, should we run a yield calculator on these quick? Just kind of curious. Let's do her. So we did the yield calculator 
and I actually show within a bushel for each one, but look at the kernel size between these two. He has the same amount of rows around and kernels up, but my kernels are so much bigger than mine. Yep. And that's something that's not accounted for in the yield calculator. So, so it'll be interesting here when you get in there and harvest is what the test weight is yep. and the moisture. Yes. It's going to be very impressive to see the differences there too. Absolutely. And we'll for sure, like when we're harvesting this field, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show the results. So yep. Yep. whatever it is, we're going to do it. So sweet. And just, even though the yield calculator shows the same, like you can just, I mean, <laughs> you can just tell these three are such better years than these three. Mm -hmm. We go like this. Yeah, big difference. All right, let's go to the next field, which I think this one's going to be an even bigger difference bigger yet. Difference. Okay, made to the next field. This should be easier to see a difference because we did not go through this field with the anhydrous bar. And it's just, this is just a little bit of a better field too. So kind of curious to see what the difference is here. I hate walking through corn. So found my, my high boy track because the high boy goes every 60 foot. So it makes it pretty easy. And this is a, let's see, this would be, one of these is a pin trail. I can't even, it'd be this one over here. This would be a pin trail. That'd be the center of your track. Yep. Look at how soft this dirt is. I can move it with my feet in both spots. This is where the planter drove. Should we go in a little bit and do our three years? So we got them back, picked three random ears, same as we did before. And here's the low pressure, here's the high pressure. The, the high pressure has one pretty good ear, but the other two are definitely lacking in size compared. So like this one versus this one, you can see quite a bit of difference there. That one's pretty similar there, but smaller than that one and that one. Um, should we do a quick yield check on these ones too? Yep. So we did a quick yield checker, or yield estimator, I should say, not checker. And average, these were 224, these were 218. Was it 218? I believe it's 218. Yep. So, pretty, and you said that sounds about... That's what well, we're seeing a setup like yours. It's being pulled by a two-track machine. We're just doing the planter. We're seeing a three to four bushel acre difference. Okay. It's been across the board on every system. Yep. Yield check. So it's going to be fun to see what your shows. Yeah, for sure. Right in, right in with that. And one other thing that we want to mention is that these were not the same variety. This this field is actually a DeKalb field, and the one that we were in previously was a Wiffles field. So, yep. um, doesn't really matter what brand of corn. You know, it's not. It's not yield. It's not variety specific. Right. Not at variety all. specific. Um, from what I've seen, it's, it's not, it doesn't come down to fertility, doesn't come down to mother nature. These are side by sides and we're seeing the exact same results across the board. So we can relate all of this to just basically compaction. Yeah. What it comes down to. And, and it's kind of the same thing that we saw at the last field. Um, his ears are smaller, but they actually had more kernels around because your kernels are so much smaller yep. there. So yeah, so it'd be definitely super interesting to see our, our harvest results and what everyone has to remember too is that these are harvest results on a dry year yep we had very dry planting conditions we had some pretty good rains early to mid season but late season we've been very dry again so imagine if this was a wet year wet spring what the difference could be yeah exactly so, and the other side of it we were out here earlier we were talking that rut Yep. And how important having that roots down when we have a dry year like that, that plant's trying to get all the True. moisture it can. And when we don't have roots in the ground to go down and grab that moisture, yep. this is the results we see too. So, yeah. Well, this is awesome. I appreciate it, Rob. Thank hey, you so I much for it. it's been fun. For, um, for getting us set up and then coming down here a couple times and doing these, these little um, mid season check ins yeah. on this. I, I'm excited. And I think that this is going to be one of the, the easiest equipment-based ROIs we've probably ever done. Yeah, I think hands-on it will be. So Looking forward to seeing what the combine shows this fall. Yeah, I am too. A couple weeks away. Sweet. Well, I'm going to go show my dad and brother this because they're going to be excited to see that. Good. <laughs> All right, let's do that. All right. Yeah, check this out. So this is Grandpa and Grandma's, these two. Yeah. And those two are B and A. Okay. So can you tell offhand which one's... The top row or the bottom row? Which one's low pressure? I would kind of hope the top. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So it's just dry, so you know none of the ears are like super spectacular, but just the size difference in 
in a lot of these ears. Really? Yeah, especially like this one had one kind of dud, but just in general, the the size of the ears. Well, it's so hard for me to believe because it's been so dry. Yeah. You know, if you would have been in the mud, I would have been disappointed not to see that. But for being, it was dry when we planted. It's been. Yeah, we had some mid-season good rains, but end, early season end season has been really dry. And yeah. yeah, it just it's pretty impressive. We, no, we, we did a we did a yield checker, and we're kind of the that yield checker yield estimator. We're showing three to four bushel. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, what was really amazing is that, especially at uh, B and A, we we couldn't really use a yield estimator there because there's actually more kernels on the smaller ears because okay. they're just so small. That's why I, mean, I was on the trick question. I mean, they do look fatter round. Yeah, they had like, they're like 20 ears around, or 20 okay. kernels around. Ridiculous. Okay. The kernels but, are a lot small. But the kernels were so small. Okay. So, he said, he said one thing that you can do too is, he said get a test weight and moisture so checker of them both. Yeah, it's, it's going to be hard to get it really accurate. No, not right now, when we're harvesting. I'm just saying you could. So we have a weight at, you know where it's at in the field then. Right? Yeah, we'll, we'll, grain, we'll grain cart weigh it, yeah. Okay. Which here again, if it's you know two to five bushels, awfully hard to see. But yep. If you can consistently get something. Yeah. I mean, for as dry as we are, and you can see that big of a difference. I mean, I think that's that's kind of like a a good reassurance for me, I guess. Yeah. I, it doesn't. It won't. If it's that good in a dry year, I don't. I think the ROI is is there. I mean, if it, within one year, maybe or within two years for sure. Yeah. No, it's. Uh, if not one. Huh. Yeah, like I said, I when we first we first planted with it, I was a little disappointed because when you pushed down there, it seemed like it was yeah about the same. Yeah, but you know, and I think part of it is you're just even over the. I don't know. It'd be fun to do it on a Bauer bar, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering if the Bauer bar, the wider tires, if you aren't packing just closer closer to, that. to the. Or here you got a little wider area where that row is. Yep. But that's making the difference. So yeah, huh. I'm gonna yeah. say those. I'm gonna leave those there for Chris. But okay, well, good. Yeah, shit actually works. Huh? <laughs> yep.